Hey everybody, welcome to an ad hoc unplanned show. Uh, this is going to be a little different because I'm doing it from a different different studio um, or different setup, I guess. So hopefully everything will work. Seems like I'm having a few little uh, few little problems trying to get everything set up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hopefully you can hear and see me. I see a few people in the in the live chat. So. Um, and I don't have all my my normal stuff, so this will be interesting. You have to let me know if you can hear me and all that kind of good stuff. Anyways, partly this is going to be a test just to see how things are working and if everything is working. And then maybe we can chat about a couple things if you have any have any comments or questions that you want me to cover. Um, I'm actually doing this from from Debbie's house today. <coughs> Excuse me, forgot to hit the mute. So that's why it looks a little different, and maybe it might even sound a little different because the, uh, the, uh, all the stuff is different. Let's see. Uh oh, where's my mouse going? Oh, there it is. All right. Huh. Let me see if I can highlight some comments. Kate, uh, for big little voices. It's good to see you. DSD. Um, okay. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, David says, good evening, Dwayne. How about for a few, my mouse keeps dying here, for a subject match today, did we go over the in-laws who raised the ex to be narcissist? Would you like to share snippets from some of your stories? Yeah, we could do that. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Let me just kind of get this all figured out. I have this software is like, since I haven't used it, I just installed it. It's like, Hey, let me give you all these little tips, all these little things. Every time I click on something, it's dropping an overlay saying, did you know that it would do this or that? <laughs> Anyways, hopefully uh, you don't hear all the clanking around in the back. Joy's uh, uh, Love says, can hear you fine. And David says, uh, sounds good. Miami Babe says, missed you guys, miss you too. I'm not sure. I think Debbie just sent me a note that she's not going to be hanging out on the live stream. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and then my this mouse is not working well. All right. <clears throat> not now. There we go. All right. Well, David brought up a good question. So let me go back to that. Uh, talking about how the, the exes in our parents helped to formulate the scenario that we are in. And the thing I would say with that is typically it seems that people's life experiences, primarily their family of origin, can really have a strong influence on how they turn out. The interesting part is, is I mean, hell, you can even have, you can even have uh, kids in the same family and one turns out to be more of an empathetic person. The other one turns out to be more of a narcissistic person, self-centered and whatnot. And it all really depends upon what you experienced and what you went through. There is also some, some uh, what do you call it, uh, thought about it being, uh, there's a genetic piece to it as well. But I think a lot of it is, is just how you raise or how they are raised and how they learn to cope. And I think the biggest problem that we ultimately end up having, I was just actually talking to a coaching client on this the other day. You know, you, you can get to the point where you feel like your ex is a evil mastermind that's able to, you know, just plan and, and all this stuff and be super methodical. And it's easy to fall in that trap. It's easy to think that, that you know, they're, everything they do is completely planned and, and you know, it's with reason and with, uh, I mean, with a, a, a goal in mind. Whereas I think the reality of it is they learn from a young age how to cope and how to manipulate and how to do things. And they have decades of experience doing that. And then whenever you or we are in the position of fighting them, then you 
have the scenario where you're figuring this stuff out and you're fighting against somebody who is a master at this technique that they do it by instinct. They're not necessarily sitting there plotting and grabbing a notepad and saying, okay, well, I'm going to, this is my move and that's what I'm going to do. And, and this is what I'm planning on doing. It's just, it's just, they're doing it by instinct. They're doing it because that's what they know how to do. In a lot of ways, especially for people who have longer term relationships, it's along the same lines as you being able to watch people understand what they're doing, kind of recognize the danger signs, recognize how to be a people pleaser and deal with people in that situation. Cause you probably grew up in that situation. That's kind of the way, the way I was. And then when you think that you're dealing with a normal person or you think your reality, your four decades of reality is what is real. And then you slowly start to understand, or you so slowly start to see the fog that's underneath the, you know, that that's, that's our underneath the fog, underneath the mask is what I'm trying to say. You start to see underneath the mask to where, you know, well, not that, you know, but that you start to see that, wait a minute, something's not quite right. Something's a little different. And uh, it really screws with your head, right? I mean, it even makes it harder on this. So you're dealing, technically, we're dealing with somebody who's always been the same way. Like going back up to, uh, let me see if I can highlight that so I can get to it. Going back up to David's comment, I wonder if I can make this different in size differently. And nah, not really. So let me see if I can make, I'm just going to see if I can make the text a little bit bigger. Nope, went the wrong way. Let me do that. Let me see if this makes it a little bit. Oh, that didn't help at all. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'll stop messing with that. I'll just move it down here. Sorry about that. Anyways, you, you get in a scenario where, where, uh, like I, this is what happened with me is I, I was like, oh my God, she's doing this on purpose. She's making these decisions and with intent, she's trying to hurt me. She's trying to, to accomplish something. And the reality is, is it wasn't that, I mean, it was not that at all. It was basically she was just operating on, operating on instinct and the damage that was being done was just kind of like a collateral damage or a secondary effect of what was actually going on. David, you'll have to let me know if that actually made sense. And let me go through a few comments. Oh, by the way, this will be a little bit shorter because this was like a target of opportunity because of uh, some stuff that we were trying to do today. I gotta get. I keep moving the mouse off the uh, the mouse pad, and then the desk it won't work, so it just stops working. Oh, Debbie is on. Okay, um, she says I am here, and uh, I guess I don't understand why that 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 text must have come in from before. Okay, that was weird. Ah, uh, let's see. Scrolling the wrong way. Scrolling a different way. It's Miami Babe says, did you guys move? Nope, this is actually her place. I still have my other place. My studio is still set up and hot standby, ready to go. K Vicky says, it's not that they're such a master, in my opinion. It's that they're so aligned with negativity that it just feeds them subconsciously. Absolutely agree with that. They may even think they're so smart, but they're, let me go to the next one, automatically being acted through uh, yes, exactly like instinct. Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's a it, it's a, it's an interesting interesting experience. Hold on, I'm gonna try to uh, try to get this more set up to way I used to do things. Let's see, I'm gonna make this bigger. So, I guess the question is, what do you guys think about that? I mean, how do you do you? If you, I'm pretty sure if you're early into this, you're gonna feel like, no, that doesn't, no, that makes no sense. I do not agree with that at all, at all, and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So let me scroll down through. David says, makes perfect sense. My ex and her mother have aligned, I'm sorry, alienated my child against me, had to give in and walk away. Sometimes, I hate to say it, sometimes that is what ends up happening. You know, and, and, and I think the reality is, it's real, e it's real easy to fall in the trap whenever the alienation is happening that we try to fight it directly 
And unfortunately, that turns out to be probably the worst strategy because it actually falls into the trap of what they're expecting you to do. And the worst part about this is it actually enables them to set up a scenario to prime the kids that we're going to be a certain way. And then we end up doing it. So to the child, it seems like, oh my God, they were correct. This is exactly what's happening. Daddy's bad. So David, uh, do you get any time with your kids or is it a complete lost, uh, lost cause? Because if you still do have time, there are ways to work to undo it. It's just, it's a complicated process. It takes a lot of time. This is what happened with me. I mean, if you guys have listened to me talk about this in the past, I mean, I had to basically recognize the mistakes I was making that was kind of sending things down the wrong way and then do the opposite and then basically take pokes in the eyes from the kids, you know, the old boop right in the eye and continue to act the way, the, the new way, so to speak. And then after a while, you could kind of start saying, well, hey, you know what? I, I see that, you know, you think I do this, but I've really worked hard to try to not do that. Are you noticing, you know, I mean, you're noticing that, right? And it, it took me probably about six months, I think, to make it, to get some progress on there, on that. Uh, Tema, okay, I can't even pronounce your name. I'll just call you Tim, Tema. Tema says she was crazy before you met her. It's not you. Yeah. I, and I think the reality is, is that we get into the, uh, we, we kind of like draw it to ourselves or we accept it, right? It depends on how you look at it. Like for me, I grew up in a scenario to where I had that family of origin that, that really didn't, didn't help at all. And it primed me for whenever things started getting weird, instead of having an, a boundary saying, no, this is new. This is not the way things are going to go. I started making excuses for it. I started saying, well, you know, this is how things are. This is what people do. You know, it's, I didn't, I don't like this, but it, it is what it is. And there's, you know, I mean, it's just, it's uh, it's one of those things. And unfortunately it, uh, it kind of draws you in to where you like for my, in my scenario to where you feel like, you know, okay, I am, this is not what I'm not expecting, but okay, this is the way things are. This is the way it's always been. There's always problems. People always have issues, you know, so it's just what it is. And there's not, not much I can do about it. Uh, bottom line is what you end up doing is you end up rationalizing it and explaining it away. And then if you're really smart, like this knucklehead on screen right now, it takes you two decades to ultimately realize, Hey, this isn't right. I can't live like this anymore. I have to try something different. I have to do something different. So let me know if that makes sense to you. Yeah, a new grad from a young professional says, agreed, second nature reaction due to emotional immaturity. Absolutely. Oh, I don't know if I said this. I feel like I can hear myself breathing. If, if you guys are hearing that, I apologize. My other setup's a little bit different, and I use the microphone in a little different way. What I would say about the second nature and emotional immaturity, and I think I failed, failed to mention this earlier, is... I firmly believe what happens is, is they have a trauma that locks them into a certain age. And you may be in a relationship with somebody who's 20, 30, 40, 50 years old, but they're still acting like a 14 year old or a nine year old. You know, the only problem is, is that a child, you have the ability to send them to their room, ground them. A really small child, you can throw them over throw them over your shoulder and walk them out of the, uh, of the situation so you can deal with it. When you're dealing with somebody who's 30 or in my switch situation, when I started 40, the rest of the world doesn't look at them and go, Oh, okay, well, they're just a nine year old in a 40 year old body. They go, Oh, that's a 40 year old. And what they're saying must be true. And what they're doing must be, you know, must not, what must be a, an intellectually thoughtful adult way of dealing with things. And then you realize that it's not quite, not quite the case. 
I feel like my microphone is overdriving. Or, or it's just that the other microphone that I use is just really a nice microphone. All right. Joy's Love says, automatically saying and doing the next mean, cruel thing. Like an... Uh, imp Petulant? Impetu oh, impetulant child. Okay. If I would have read the whole thing, I would understand what you meant. Pub Giant says, is it just me who, or is it just who they are? It's instinctual. I think in a lot of ways, yes. And uh, also they perceive the world differently and their threshold for what is acceptable is different from people that aren't disordered. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to what I was just talking about with the stuck at that lower age you know if if you look and i'm sure you guys have done well i did this at one point when I, I had i didn't understand personality disorders i didn't really understand what i was dealing with uh, however i did start to think about it. it's like oh my god i'm dealing with a you know like a, a teenager and then i when i started looking at things saying okay what would probably a 13 or 14 year old do or 12 year old do i could almost predict what what the ex was going to do you know and and if you guys any of you guys who have kids that are in that age it makes it even easier because you're like oh my god my you know my 10 year old is doing exactly exactly that it's miami babe says we got big news okay i'm gonna read this with beta breath we are now with, oh thank god we are now with permanent full custody mom has has only only, sorry, mom only has supervised visitation. Alienation reversed with all three. Okay, I don't know if this is programmed to do this, but I'm going to hit the button. Oh, it is. Outstanding. It's Miami Babe has been a longtime uh, viewer of the of DSD. So we've, if for any of you guys have been here a while, I see a lot of new faces in here, so that may not be the case. But they had a situation where mom had really started pushing the alienation against uh, her and her husband or the the bio the biological father of the kids she's a stepmom and it was not going well and uh hopefully i like to think that i played a little little role in that gave them some advice on how to deal with it and if they were able to turn that around with all three kids that's amazing because i I, the, I think the last time we spoke, there was like one kid, you know, one kid was okay. Another kid was completely gone. And the other one was kind of, if I remember correctly, was like on the fence. So to be able to flip that back around. So it's this, everyone is, is another example or is an example of how you stay with this. Don't, you know, you got to keep your game face on. I think the problem is, is so often you feel like the system is stacked against you. You feel like everything is not going to work, that there's no chance or little chance of hope of anything happening in your favor. Favor, And I almost fell into this to where you basically feel like I'm going to lose. They're saying I'm, I'm a monster, so I might as well be this. Or you just get to the point that you get so frustrated that you start making decisions that, that just backfire and really hurt you. I did do that. Technically, it didn't really hurt me because I was able to navigate it and persevere and overcome, but uh, it absolutely did create problems that I had to, as I realized that my previous methodology of working on this wasn't working. And uh, then, like I was mentioning earlier, when you try to undo that, it takes you, you have to, you have to change. You have to demonstrate by your actions that it's different. When you're doing that, you absolutely cannot fall back into your old pattern or behavior. Otherwise it resets everything. And then once you've had an opportunity to, to demonstrate it, then the kids will start seeing that, oh, okay, things are different. Anyways, so that is awesome to hear though. I'm glad to hear that. Tony says, I haven't seen my kids for a full year because of a restraining order she filed. Yeah, the Tony, that, that may, I'm assuming that means that you had a restraining order and it was upheld. Uh, unfortunately, 
and I've known people, I mean, I've had people I've worked with on that. It's like if, if when that happens, you've made a mistake that they're able to leverage off of, it makes it a lot harder to undo. And it, once a restraining order's in, it, it just really complicates things because then it turns into potentially supervised visitation. Tony, and I know you're, it's a fake name, Tony Soprano with the Tony Soprano uh, avatar. That's pretty funny. But Tony, if it, do you have any interaction with your kids or is it, well, you had said you haven't seen your kids. I mean, do you have any contact or are you basically unable to interact with them at all? If you, you don't have to answer if you don't, uh, if you don't want to. John, welcome to the live stream. I see a few people doing the boops. Alex, hey man. Uh, I... Well, I guess I can say Alex is the other half of It's Miami, babe. So David says, uh, lost cause going on three years. Matters matters only escalate and got worse. Now they are moving. Unfortunately, I'm better off without due to all the trauma they have caused in my life. And it goes on to say, hope my daughter grows to realize this later in life. You know, and I think the, the reality, the reality is sometimes, sometimes, these things just head this way. Now, the, the, the risk is, and this is what, I, fortunately this didn't happen in my case, but I was, I, was, I was basically accepting the hands of defeat, or you know, accepting defeat out of the hands of victory. Uh, I thought I was absolutely gonna lose. I thought the alienation was going to completely stick, and I figured that they were all gonna be moving out of state and I would never see them again. And I was, really having a hard time reconciling that reality and what I was going to have to be able, or how I would deal with that and be able to process it and not have it completely destroy my life. And and that's the reality on this is like, you know, you, you do the best you can. And if everything falls apart, you absolutely owe it to yourself to hit the reset rebuy baseline your life and try to start over. I know that that's incredibly difficult to do. I mean, you know, I know when I was going through that and I was thinking that that was going to happen, it was one of those things where I just, Oh no. Oh no. I just lost the camera. Okay. Well, that is an interesting take on it. Uh, what can I do differently? What can I do? What can I do? It's like, what can I do as a drunken sailor? All right, let's see here. Maybe I can switch cameras. Sorry about this. But this is part of what this is. It's a test. And technically, oh, this is a horrible camera. <laughs> technically, this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the backup solution. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see how this works out. All right, I apologize. That completely, completely threw me for a loop. Anyways, um, I wonder if I can... Yeah, I don't know when that other camera's going to come back. Okay, well, it overheated. It's good old Sony's, uh, the, and it's kind of hot in this room, so I can understand it. Anyways, I apologize for that. So, in, what I was and that was a, and that was really an important thing I was talking about. Okay, what I would say is this: you know, when you get in that scenario, you basically have to say, okay, you know what? They've freaking nailed me. I'm knocked down. I'm I'm down on the down on the you know on the ropes or whatever. And you can let them win. I'm gonna look at the right camera. You can let them win and let it destroy your life. Or you can say, fuck this. I'm gonna take my life back and I'm gonna figure out a way to where I'll be okay with it. And you owe it to yourself to at least try that. I don't know if that makes any sense. You'll have to let me know what you think. So, all right, let's see here. Joy's Love says to uh, David, we have to learn to value our lives, time and energy spent. Absolutely. That's kind of what I was just saying. Well put, Joy. Hardimus says, my ex is BPD and I feel ashamed for allowing the abuse for like 20 years. I did a lot of work, but now I'm I'm having trust issues. How can I trust the world again? That, hard to miss if I'm saying that correctly, is a great question. And exactly, exactly the same thing that I went through. 
I mean, I, for, I, it's so funny. All of our stories are, you know, I'm sorry that this is going to be bouncing around because of the way this, the monitor is moving around, but I apologize. Here's the thing. Went through the exact same thing. I was like, holy crap. How was I so freaking blind for two freaking decades? Arver, it was like 21 years. I had my head firmly up my behind and did not see it. And I actually went through a phase where I'm like, I cannot, I do not trust myself. I obviously have no clue what's going on. I even remember at one point when I was working with a therapist, I'm like, how in the hell can I be successful at my day job, managing a ton of people in charge of a ton of crap? And I didn't even see this happening in my own house. That is incredibly common. So hard to miss. Dude, I get where you're at. You are feeling exactly what a lot of people, probably a lot of people watching the stream right now, are feeling. Very normal. Here's the thing. When you say, how can I trust the world again? It will take time. You got to work on yourself. You got to work on yourself of having better boundaries. You got to work on yourself to realize, how did I get in a scenario where I put myself in a situation? Because your ex... Hard to miss, did not turn BPD a day and a half ago. They were that way the entire time. And the reality is, is you were conditioned to accept that behavior. And when you saw the warning signs early on, you ignored it like we all do. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And you rationalize it like I was talking about earlier. But here's the thing. You work on that. You're going to slowly start to trust yourself again. You'll slowly start to test the waters and you'll realize that you now see the world differently. Right now you're in that phase to where you're seeing it like, like you, like you burnt your hand on the stove and you've recoiled back in the room and you don't want to touch anything because you know, anything, everything's going to burn you. And probably at the course of this, because what happens is, is when you start realizing that you've been primed for this, you start realizing, and this sucks, and I did not enjoy this at all, is you realize you've had a lot of toxic people in your life, and you're surrounded probably by a lot of toxic people. And then you start to feel really alone, and then you start to feel like everyone is toxic because that's what you've surrounded yourself with. This is what happened with me. And it takes you some time to realize, no, wait a minute, not everybody is bad. Not everybody does this. Not everybody does that. It's like you surround yourself with what you're drawing to yourself, right? And that's exactly what happened to me. I could look at it as I was going through this. I was even looking at my professional relationships where I was allowing toxicity into my life. that had no, no business being there. And then I started purging it out of my life. Now, I have to go to... Tiffany, where, oh my gosh, there's all kinds of comments. Holy cow. But it's to a super chat. Tiffany did a super chat. I really appreciate it. It says, donate to get Dwayne a fan. Too hot for the camera. <laughs> yeah, I probably what happened is, is on this camera, the other camera, the one I keep looking at that's not on anymore because uh, it's I completely shut down, like the everything's collapsed on it is I probably forgot to set it into high temperature mode. But thank you so much for that, Tiffany. I really appreciate it. It's always, uh, it's always cool when you guys do the, the super stickers and super chats and all that kind of stuff. So let me scroll back, uh, see where I was at. Oh, sweet. Joy, Joy says, you sound fine. No breathing sounds. Oh, awesome. Um, thank you for, thank you for clarifying that. Cause I feel like I, I hear everything in the microphone and the headphones and it's like, it's, it's kind of distracting to me. My other microphone does not do that. John says, Dwayne, I challenge you that I'm a bigger knucklehead. My ex, uh, ex's family was made up of broken families. My ex acted like a five-year-old. Yep. You know, and, and, and going back to what, um, uh, Hardimus said, you know, when, when you, when you finally have that realization and you feel like you're such an, well, yeah, you, you're just like, how did that happen? It, it, it's really tough. It makes all this stuff really hard. Again, one of the primary reasons why I created this channel is because 
when I was going through this and I was having these realizations and I was having these epiphanies at the same time, I'm like, there was no support. There wasn't anybody who, you know, the only thing was the normal guy thing where it's like, ah, just suck it up. That's the way it happens. You're going to lose everything. You'll be living out of your car. You're going to lose your kids. You're going to lose everything. And it was like, nobody could really articulate a, what was going on, why it was happening and a pathway through it. And I hope for you guys, I mean, I know some of you guys who've been around a long time, you know, I know your views on it, but for the newer people, I hope you, I hope the, the, my content and the old stuff combined with the new stuff, you see that, okay, this is a person who's been through it, who gets it, who understands their story resonates with mine. And you can see the, uh, the progress that I've made. If, uh, if I had a way to bring it up, I would show you, I take it as an opportunity to show you my camping channel where I'm doing, you know, cool, cool outdoorsy stuff. And I'm taking my life back. I'm taking my life back. And you guys, you, 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 sorry, pointing at the wrong camera. You can take your life back as well. Pug, uh, Pug Giant says, Nar, uh, Narc's maturation process usually ends in teens. Uh, my ex for sure, maybe ninth grade. Yep. It's all common guys. It's like the same freaking playbook. And I'll just, I know, you know, I mean, if you're new to this channel, you think, oh, this is a guy's channel, but I'll tell you, there's a bunch of women on here who have had the same, you know, they'll, they'll look, listen to my story and they're like, oh my God, you, you're, you're talking my story. Cause these people all follow the same playbook. Now, granted, there are some stereotypical things that men typically do or how they respond. And there's some terror stereotypical things that women do, you know, in these scenarios, but for the most part, it's the same playbook. David says, yes, my ex is trapped as 21 max and is almost 40. A dude, I would probably say probably not even, well, yeah, maybe. I mean, some of the stuff I've seen on some of the weird podcasts, like what, uh, whatever, or the fresh and fit thing, um, makes my head hurt seeing some of these young, young women, with the things they say, it's just like, what? You know, it's like a narcissism on full, full display. Uh, Debbie says to David, although I cannot promise one way or another, just saying, okay, I guess I missed something else. So I'm saying that, but I don't know what the context is. So I apologize on that. Oh, okay. Uh, just stay consistent with your child will later realize your true colors and brainwash could be reversed. Yep. And the thing I would say, the, the, the one caveat, not caveat, but the one thing I would say to remember on this, keep looking at the wrong camera. You have to keep the door open. It is so easy to get so jaded and hurt and say, you know what? I can't believe that this kid turned against me. I'm not going to, you know, done. I'm done. I got to, I got to wall up that part of my heart to not get hurt anymore. And I understand that, but the ultimate success is if you can keep the door open to where if, and when, cause it's not always, but a lot, most of the time I would say it's probably a higher probability to be when the door opens up, you can start that dialogue again and start to repair it. Now, the hard part about it is, is a lot of times kids will, as they start to age, will realize that uh, they made a colossal mistake and, and accepting that is really not easy. And the, <laughs> if you really want to shut it down, just try to make them feel guilty about it. So it makes it easier for them to say, you know what, I just don't want to confront this. So try to keep the door open, please. It's, it's, I know it's not easy, but, but if you can do that. John says to Tony, my ex did the restraining order. Her attorney filed it in district court. I wrote to the judge about how that firm was using district court restraining orders to lock up cases that was, that firm was admonished. And if I remember correctly, he, John crushed his ex and that law firm. It says, I got that firm admonished from taking ROS from the district court. If it wasn't a 
Christian, I would have called all their, oh, if he was a Christian, I would have called them and put them out of business. Oh man. Tiffany had a, it says celebrates 31 months of being a member. It's hard to believe that I've had this. I mean, I, I, I posted a thing on the community tab about the channel hitting, uh, seven years. So uh, earlier this month, earlier part of May, the channel went over being on YouTube for seven years. That's amazing. It's hard to believe that the membership thing has been around and I have people who've been members over uh, 31 months. That's, that's incredible. Thank you so much for your continued support, Tiffany. I really do appreciate it. And for everyone who's done that or whatever, uh, you know, had happened to fall off or whatever, I've been kind of in a hiatus uh, dealing with, you know, my, the stuff going on with the kids and the ex and ex's boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. And I am getting ready to basically kind of relaunch everything, not relaunch it, but just dive some more energy into it. I'm really looking forward to that. All right, let's see. Pub Giant says, absolutely. My ex was obsessed with my son throughout his high school career as her need for him to be an extension for her, of her and for her to live through him vicariously was magnified greatly. Yeah, unfortunately, these people don't want to be parents. They want to be friends. And I think the worst thing you can do for a teenager is not be a parent and enable them to do stupid things like, you know, teenagers, you're like, oh, it's okay for you to you know, spend the night with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. That is a incredibly common, <laughs> common thing I've seen and heard from a lot of people. So Miami babe says DSD, you did play a huge part of our win. It's outstanding. We are now helping others, uh, helping other parents. That's awesome. And I keep thinking we only got this far because we didn't fall into those early mistakes because of your channel. You know, going to hit this again. That is outstanding. And I think the best part about that is being, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about being like in real life advocates for other people. And even if it's online, it, it works too. But, but the more people that, that when, when you get that part, I was talking, so I keep looking at the wrong camera. The part I was talking about earlier where, you know, when you have somebody where someone comes to you and they're like, oh my God, my life's spiraling out of control. This is what my ex is doing. This is what's happening with the kids. And they feel like their whole life is on fire, which it is. When someone can say, I know exactly what you're going through. This is what's happening. Let me guess that, you know, you're going through this, this, and this. I have that with coaching a lot of times. There are times where someone will be saying something and I'll say, hey, so this is what I think you're experiencing. Bang, bang, bang. And this is what you're feeling. And most of the time, like 90 nine percent of the time people are like oh my god that's exactly spot on and it's like because we all go through the same thing but my point is is that when people can interact with someone else and feel like holy crap this person gets it they understand it and then if you can look especially for you guys miami babe whenever you can look at it and say look we've succeeded this is how we succeeded these were the mistakes what we were we were thinking we were going to make and we didn't do it. And here's the resources we used. And it makes a huge different difference. Did I not even highlight your comment? I thought I did. Oh, I think maybe I didn't. I apologize. Debbie says to uh, Tiffany and John and uh, Miami Babe and Joy's Love, uh, good to see you all. And strangely, it seems I cannot get onto Discord, so I've missed out. Oh, Debbie's uh, my girlfriend. I'm actually at her studio right now. She's in the other room. And uh, uh, we haven't actually, we have not been able to do a stream where she's been able to hang out on it in, oh, geez, six, seven, eight months probably. Whoops, I scrolled the wrong way. All right. Nice. Tiffany says, uh, suing uh, suing CPS for fraud upon the court. For you guys who are new, Tiffany has been through a freaking nightmare that doesn't seem to end. And she's in that part of this, I mean, been doing through litigation for a while. And is still kind of dealing with that scenario where her ex is able to just do whatever they want and then end up getting her blamed for it. It's really 
bizarre. So it's been a long fight. Uh, I, so honestly, watching the way she deals with it has been inspiring. So Tiffany, I know this has been a hell of a hell of a, a journey for you, but you are an inspiration for people who uh, are watching what you're going through. And you will, I'm, I am confident that you're going to prevail one of these points. Mm. Kevin, hey, Kevin says, DSC, what's it like to have narcissistic in-laws? It's a nightmare. It's tough. If you understand that you have them, it's not as tough, but it also depends on the context of what you're talking. Like if you're in a relationship, well, see, you're here. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's the, you have an ex who is also being empowered and enabled by narcissistic in-laws, or you can have a relationship where you guys are trying to have your own autonomy and they're trying to influence and uh, bring their chaos into your life. No matter what, it sucks. It's not a good, it's not a good thing. Uh, a, a, from a new grad to young professional, uh, says, what was a planned topic today? I really didn't have a plan. Um, this was one of a, was a target of opportunity. Uh, Debbie and I were doing some stuff with some vehicles and it just so happened that I kind of was just st not stuck, but, but it was like just a target of opportunity. It's like, okay, well, we can't really do anything. Hey, let's fire up the studio, kick the dust off some things. I literally had to wipe some dust off, reconfigure some stuff to get it working. And, uh, it was part of it was just to, uh, to, to exercise this configuration, which obviously the one camera completely died. So I guess I could show you this. Let's see. What if I go like this? I could take this since it's a webcam and that ate itself. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. All right. Let me scroll through some of the comments. I'm going to have to wrap this up a little bit because we still, we still have to move some vehicles around and everything. Um, so I think I'll go, uh, I think I'll do an hour but maybe 18 minutes left. Uh, wise, the wise chat manager, who's also an admin or uh, not an admin, a moderator for this says, hello, all have been, have been stalking from the Roku on the TV. Good to see you, man. I know you got a weird schedule and it's hard to catch up with you, but it's good to see you catch us. Wow. We actually have a decent turnout tonight. So thank you guys for hanging out. I appreciate it. Oh, let's see here. Uh, y says, uh, uh, Debbie, love your horse over Dwayne's shoulder. Horse. Where is it? Where's the horse? Oh, you know what? It's probably from the different angle. Let's see if I can figure out what he's talking about here. Let's see. There. That's one. <laughs> so I, I think uh, I think the wise is probably uh, watching. Uh, it has, hasn't got to the point where the camera ate itself. David says, DSC, thank you so much for everything, uh, everything. And then boom, lights go out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm getting to about the point where that happened. So, oh, this one, this, this right here, AK says, went to kids school, uh, kiddo school event. X was being super nice. Remember, I have a video about beware of the nice, uh, drives me crazy, but I don't let it show. You know, the thing that I used to have a really hard time with that AK, and I, I know I made videos about this, but it's a good segue to bring it up. The ex was making all these allegations about how a horrible person I was, how I was abusive, how she was scared that I was physically going to hurt her. And then we would go to a school function. It's like, oh, hi, how are you to always sit, sit right here? Why won't you sit right here? We could sit together. And I, and I was like, I mean, it, it made my head hurt because I'm like, wait a minute, you know, you're acting like I'm going to, you know, murder you at any moment. But now it's like, oh, sit right here. I mean, it's all a control. It, it, it really, it really made my head hurt because I didn't understand how someone could do that. Uh, B. Mendez says, hi, uh, I recognize some of you folks and want to say a huge thank you for your constant support. Outstanding. Thanks for saying that. Glad you could catch us. The Y says, uh, kill them with kindness at school events. They'll eventually lose it. Oh yeah. Uh, the way I dealt with that whole, you know, sit right here thing. And I mentioned this, I think on the last show, 
I just got there early and I did it. And then what ended up happening is, is like for the next few months, she wouldn't show up to any event, which was kind of nice. Still, it's always stressful because it's like, you never know, are they going to show up? Are they not going to show up? That type of thing. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, Ren Vex. No, Vex. Not vet. Yeah. It says, I took my life back by killing it off in the big city and moving out to the countryside. Sure, I have my baggage, but it's much easier to work in this environment. Oh, man, that sounds great. The only thing I would say to you is be not hyper aware, but keep your eyes open for, for things that quote unquote trigger you. I, I know I hate using that word, but but this it's real. And what I mean is, is if you find yourself, you know, when you're, when you're away from them and you're in an environment that you're basically kind of controlling and you're maintaining your peace, there's a, there's a phase where you, you've found your peace and you, and it's yours. There's also a phase where you've basically taken that past experience, you've put it in a box and you've hit it under the bed and you're ignoring it. And all it takes is anyone or anything to just kind of tap at it and it will flood back like it never happened. So if you find yourself in a situation to where, you know, somebody could tell you a story or you see some, something happens where it causes you to kind of have that emotional flashback, that means it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not fun, but it just means that you're not completely healed from it yet. And, you know, then you need to work on it some more. So it may not be your issue. Just want to say that because from what you said, that uh, made me think of that. And I wanted to throw that out there. David says, I'm working on myself and it's working outstanding. Slowly but surely regrouping with the help of my fiance, who was a witness to all this for a better part of a decade. Hell keeps me from going crazy. Validation is super important in this whole thing. And it, and this is where I think it's kind of, sometimes it's tough. Well, I was going to say sometimes it's tough for like the therapy type stuff, like the therapy channels when they're just talking about the, the behaviors and whatnot. I'm trying to think how to word this. But the validation, whenever you like, oh my God, this is what's happening. This is why it happened. I kind of understand it. And you feel like you're not losing your, you know, not, not living in the twilight zone is a huge part of this. You can't stay there forever. I think that's part of the problem with some of the Facebook groups is you get the people who get into that validation stage and they just want to basically validate for 10 years, but you can't move forward. You get, you get trapped in that mode and you're unable to actually break free from it. And the goal of all this, at least in my mind, my, my goal for you guys is to break that cycle, take your life back, Hopefully, if you have kids, re repair and rebuild the relationship with your children and minimize what they're doing and ultimately not have to look and delve into this information anymore because you don't need it. Granted, sometimes you, you know, need a little refresher from now and then, but for the most part, I do have people who come back for that. Okay, I already answered that one. All right, looking at some of the comments. Whoops. Artemis for earlier says, touche, my, my mother is BPD, covert MPD. My sister is BPT, hysteronic. My mother-in-law is BPD, MPD. And my ex-girlfriend is histrionic. Uh, what a mess. Yeah, and, and that's, if I remember correctly, you said 20 years. It it, it, it primes you for it, right? That's why I've, I often say, like, if I, if I run into someone on the channel and they're like, oh, I met this person, we were together for a few years and it broke apart. Normally, those are the people who, when you when you ask the question of like, "Hey, what's your family of origin?" It's like, "Oh, my parents are great. You know, I've been married forever. You know, it's a, it's they're they're they've been wonderful to me." It's those people. I keep looking at the wrong camera. It's those folks who typically recognize something's wrong sooner, and instead of falling into that trap of like, oh, "Okay, well, that's the way things are. You know, it's just the way people are." You say, "Whoa, wait a minute. This is something's wrong here." And they're able to get out of it a lot sooner. Where are we at? Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> oh, I got to highlight this one. AK says, my ex dresses up as a 20-year-old and she is 40. That's not right. Oh, my God, AK. My, mine. 
she definitely did that. Um, I mean, we were just together the other day. I'm trying to remember. I don't know if she, I mean, she's yeah, anyways, it's, uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Ooh, Nando says, go woke, go broke though. Explain what you mean on, on that. Uh, I'd love to, maybe I missed part of the comment, but I'd love to hear what you have to say about or what you're talking about. All right. Oh, Christine, or Christy, sorry, says, hi. We watch from Australia. My partner's having a horrible time and you have helped him so much. Well, I'm glad to be able to help, Christy. And thanks for uh, jumping on the live stream. All right, let's see. I'm trying to so now, now I'm at the point where I'm trying to discern where there's comments going on through people and what's going for me. If you want, if you want to make sure you get a hold of me, just do at DSD. Uh, so I know you're trying to talk to me or put question or something, and I know that it's uh, for that. Chrissy said, "My partner's oldest, who he had a strong relationship with, was essentially alienated." I'm sorry to hear that. And now we don't have much contact. Uh, a year ago, this happened. His youngest two, his youngest two, she has just sent an email Friday, maybe, uh, saying they now need one residence instead of two. This is just so hard on the kids. We think that it's because we are about to be married. Oh yeah, and she lost her role, so it increases child support. Their order is 50 50. Well, no, it's, just, it, it's, it's that. And it's like, how dare you move on? How dare you move on and have a life? And, and, you know, and, and I no longer, she no longer has the ability to create chaos. So they ramp it up. Um, the problem with the oldest, going back to what you were saying before, typically what happens, and I'm assuming, did you say it was a boy? Uh, who he had a strong relationship with. Okay, you don't say if it's a boy or a girl. My guess would be that it's a boy. And what ends up happening is the parentification of the kids and that child, male child, is basically becomes the new uh, husband and uh, feels responsible for their mom. Uh, and it's really tough and kids should not be in that role, but unfortunately that is what happens. Uh, going back to what you're talking about with them saying they need one, one race. You can say that. I mean, I know you're in Australia, so that makes things a little different, but for the most part, when you have 50, 50, there's gotta be a, a significant change of circumstance to really warrant a change. Sometimes what they can do on that to force it is a move away. Um, just the, my, my advice to you guys is try to make things as calm and peaceful for your kids as possible or for the kids as possible. It's so easy to fall into the trap of like, oh my God, I need the kids to understand that if they support this and what they're telling their mom could potentially destroy everything. The, oh, they're all girls. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well, then, hmm. Okay, I'll dive into that in a minute. Let me finish this, this thought. Uh, Keeping things calm and stable for the kids is better because it makes the parental parental alienation. It's like an inoculation to it, right? It's whenever you start freaking out and you bring that stress energy in, the kids feel it. And then you start trying to explain things to them. And then they're confused and they go back to the other parent and they say, well, mommy, daddy, or yeah, you know, daddy's saying this. And then they're able to say, well, that's not what's happening. You know, it's so sad your dad's putting you through this, right? You know, typically guys have a tendency or typically the target, I'll say it this way, typically the target of this crap tries to uh, a frontal attack using logic and the emotional manipulation that the other person is doing, it falls right into it. So you got to be really careful of it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to scroll down. And the wise chat manager gifted five memberships. Thank you so much for that. Wise, I appreciate it. That means some of you guys can do the cool boops and have access to the custom emojis and whatnot. So uh, for those five people, make sure you enjoy that. <laughs> if you can, if you're, if you're one of the ones who said you were gifted a membership, do a boop. You'll get the big finger and you'll be able to go boop. 
Oh, that's funny. And I see that there's a, yep, you know. Ah, Pepe. Hey, Pepe. I haven't seen you in a while. Pepe D. Nuts was gifted a membership. Dan Ski was. Uh, Brittany. Shane. Oh, this is funny. Debbie says, for anyone on here who who are newly following, wallowing, sorry, in the in the swamp of despair, I hope you get energized from the testimonies from others who are DSD regulars. Yeah, I really appreciate that there are a handful of people who have stayed with the channel, been involved with it to basically provide that, you know, to basically share that. You can get a lot of that on the Discord. I don't have a, way, a really good way to show that. Uh, cause I don't know how to do it on this system, but, uh, if you look in the comments of the video, not the comments, if you look in the description of pretty much any video, there is a discord link. If you're not familiar with discord, it's kind of like the old internet relay chat, but for the, you know, for the new age, uh, discord is primarily a gaming platform, but they have channels or, you know, different, like in the, in my area, there's different topics that people can chat with. You can actually talk to people via voice. You can do video. Uh, it's not tied to Facebook or anything else, so that you don't have the uh, you don't have the issue of it being tied directly to who you are. So you can maintain some of your anonymity. Uh, it's private, so when you get in, you have to drop me a DM saying, "Hey, I'm a real person," and whatnot, and then I will let you in. Otherwise, you only have access to the pr private group. We have a really good group of folks in there. Uh, I've been really happy and proud of the people who are part of that. So, oh God, David says my ex had another child out of artificial insemination just to make a playmate. The plot truly think thickens with these people. Yeah, absolutely. Tiffany says local DV group asked if I would facilitate a CPS DV support group stating the new uh, starting the new venture in June. That, okay, that one's another one that uh, is outstanding. Awesome, Tiffany. I'm proud to hear that. That's great. Savage Thinker says, the only way to make you miserable, they deprive, derive their pleasure from your agony that you allow them to inflict on you. And, and what it really is, is it's you give them that power over you and they they get their narcissistic supply knowing that they can control your emotions you know you take that away from them you don't allow and it's hard because i mean these situations are are hard but if you take that power away from them they don't they, they start to wither they'll find well i mean they'll go find support or they'll go find their narcissistic plot supply from a different place mike Cameras and coffee, great to catch the live stream. Keep up the hustle. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's my my buddy I've known for, oh my God, forever. Photo buddy. My, my photo buddy that is going to buy, Mike, if you're still watching, going to buy himself a truck so that we can go camping together. So if, if you guys can say to do at cameras and coffee, go buy your truck. Go at cameras and coffee. Mike, go get that truck. <laughs> help me out <laughs> oh that's hilarious uh hakuna matata says what's your take on one parent using the child to hand messages to the other parent and setting up activities on your time great question uh kids should not be in the middle of it however these people are going are going to make it impossible to do that what i did and probably what you all should try to do is set up a boundary and say, when the kids start doing stuff, say, no, I'm not gonna, you know, you're not gonna be passing messages and stuff. I, I did that and I tried to, you know, then I would send the email to the ex saying, stop doing this. And they wouldn't stop doing it. You know, try to set a precedence. If you're still in litigation, you can use that as a, you know, cause they're not supposed to do it. But it's, uh, it, it turns into almost, a, well, not almost, pretty much a lost cause. And uh, I've, I hate to say it, but as time progressed and the kids got older, I just started coordinating stuff with them. Now, on the setting up activities on your time, uh, okay, obviously they're doing that to screw up your, screw with your time. So the first thing is, is if they set something up and the kid wants to do it and you can take them, then you do it. 
The next thing is, is if they set it up and the kid's like, oh my gosh, dad, uh, or oh my gosh, Hakuna, uh, I really want to do this with uh, Matata and, uh, you know, and it's important to them, then facilitate it. What I generally switch to, I didn't do this in the beginning, but what I switch to is using the kids as a gauge for my, for the correct course of action. Now it's hard because if you, um, when you're looking at it and you're like, gosh, darn it, you know, I'm going to agree to this and they're winning. It, you you want to say no. And a lot of times if they do things like this, they're hoping you will say no because it feeds into the narrative. Oh, it's so sad that you're like in my situation. It's so sad. Your dad just can't get over it. I can't let it go. Uh, so what I've ultimately started doing is when something's important to the kids and it's on my time, as long as we don't have something else going on or something else planned and the kids really want to do it, I facilitate it. You know, there have been times where something comes up and I know that they want to do it with their mom and I'll be like, Hey, this is, you know, they're like, Oh, this is going on. I'm like, Oh, okay. I said, you know, I could, you know, we could do that, but it's, I know it's something you do with your mom. Would you rather just do it with her? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay, set it up. You know what I mean? So that is my advice on that. Let me know if that makes sense. Miami Babe says, we have an in-person support group for other parents going through our reunification therapists. It was a journey and we are very grateful. That is awesome. I'm so glad you guys are doing that. Christy says, uh, from Bretton Oz, my ex has withheld my 16-year-old who has mental health issues and now threatening to take my 7 and 9-year-old full time. I haven't got anywhere uh, and told court won't help with enforcement. Yeah, court typically won't help with enforcement. The best you can do is basically demonstrate and show a pattern of behavior of the the other parent violating that court order. That's the best you can do, unfortunately. And you know, it's weird because people. I had somebody sent me a note the other day saying, "Oh, my ex is a uh, is a uh, uh, threatening to call the cops because of a court order or something." I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, that ain't going to work any. You know, that ain't going to do anything for you. So, so let's see. See, I'm going through this. Let's see. Ooh, I'm over an hour. So we're going to have to wrap this one up. All right. I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm looking to see if anything, anybody's tagged me. Uh, Pug, uh, Pub Giant says, yes, the child becomes the emotional regulator for the narc slash alienating parent, a true role reversal. Uh, incredibly destructive. It absolutely is. Okay, hold on. Let me close this down. Um, and now I'm just trying to scroll through these real quick. I apologize. Mike says, uh, I'm still here and looking forward to a road trip. Yeah, we've been talking about if he doesn't get a truck, which hopefully he will, um, you know, we'll be able to go do something once school's out. Oh, uh, Chrissy says, thank you. You're holding my partner, Brett, up at the moment. And that means everything to us. Hang in there, guys. This is tough. It's not easy. I mean, see, it's not even, you know, it's still not even easy for me. I mean, I've, I've been dealing with this for what, almost 12 years. And when I, when I say, okay, it's easy and that it doesn't, it doesn't screw with me anymore. It's just kind of tiring that I still have to deal with it. But, you know, hey, technically I'm almost done. Last little, you know, high school graduation will be done here. I did the the college graduation a couple of weeks ago. Debbie and I got to go and spend uh, a, almost basically a whole day with the ex. We even went to lunch together. It was outstanding. <laughs> All right. Hakuna Matata says it does DSC. However, there is court ordered time uh, time pickup event was organized in the middle of that. It was, okay, I'm trying to remember what you said. Okay, so, however, there is court order time pickup event was organized in the middle of that. Yeah, I, God, that's a, that's a tough one. You know, double check with your attorney and, uh, and then if you can accommodate it, you know, I, I need more details. Hey, send me an email. Maybe I can make a standalone video on that. So you can give me some more details. Maybe, if you can, make it something that I can read. And uh, I'll do a whole thing on that. 
Hardiman says, DSC, after everything you went through, how do you see the future for your children? Do you have a plan or a long-term strategy to prevent things with the X? The X will not be, uh, will not get better with age. Thanks. Okay, great question. And actually, since I kind of just hit on that a minute ago, I am almost done. Been doing this for 12 years. Uh, last kid graduates on June 1st, uh, turns 18 in August. And, you know, I mean, the reality, and granted, there's some things that can happen. Uh, the reality is I don't have to interact with her anymore. The reality is, is the kids, you know, like my youngest doesn't have a car yet, but can drive. So once they get a car, you know, there's no happen to have the exes drop them off in the driveway. You know, things are going to change, you know, and you can choose what you want to do. I think for me, I've let it go a lot of the anger, the hate, the discontent, all that stuff to where I think it'll be easier if I had to interact with, with the ex because her control and her, the devastation that she can continue to do has really dissipated. So it's like, I'm, I'm slowly taking my life back. Now, maybe if I was, I, but see, the crazy part is, is I could have, whoops, I could have easily just lommed on to that anger and hate and bitterness. I'd have every right to do it. Just like you guys all have every right to be angry and, and to hold on to that. But when you hold on to it, then you don't, you can't release it. You can't, you can't move past it. Right. I mean, if I wanted to be, you know, every time I saw her, I just looked at everything I'd lost, then I, it would probably be to where I would hate being around her. Now, I don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I don't like being around her, but here's the deal. Now, whenever I happen to be around her and actually it, how, about, how do I say this? It, it's really weird. Cause what, what ends up happening is, is that it, it's kind of like validation almost. It's like I'm around her and I'm like, wow, what a garbage human being. What just, you know, you can just kind of feel and see the, the ick, you know, around the soul. You know, I, don't, I can't see auras or anything like that. But if I could, I, you know, you'd be able to see the monster behind the mask. So I feel like I escaped. Now, someone else had asked, I don't know if you did it with, um, with the kids. You know, I think I've been able to demonstrate to them healthy relationships you know, having healthy boundaries and stuff like that. And I've, I've noticed that with, I've, I've seen that, I've seen success with that with all my kids. Now, my hope is that that means that they ultimately will not have to replicate this nightmare of a situation to learn the same lessons that a lot of us have had to learn by going through this. So, but we shall, we shall, ha ultimately it's going to be those things where we just have to see. Christy says, DSD, you mentioned don't do a frontal attack. How do you maintain boundaries without getting caught in, in it or making it worse? Well, the thing is, it, here's the thing. Try to think about it when they do something that they're trying to provoke a reaction, right? And it's like, okay, so they're pushing my buttons and they're expecting me to execute, you know, execute order five. You don't do that. Do like the opposite or whatever. And it, and it kind of gives you an opportunity to put an at pattern interrupt in the whole thing. For me, early on, when I started doing that, doing since I knew she was pushing my buttons to try to, to get a response, not responding felt like a victory to me because I didn't give her what she wanted, if that makes sense. So, and the reason on the frontal attack, the problem with the frontal attack with, now you, if you guys want to legally do that with her, that's fine. You got to be careful with the kids because I have... I don't think I've ever heard of that working. It always tends to blow up in your face. It always drives a wedge with the kids. And I know for me, if I wouldn't have fallen into that trap and I would have just maintained trying to keep a calm, stable environment for the kids, that had a huge, that, that payoff was so much bigger than anything else I could have done. And when I started really doing that, that's when things really started to get better. Now, now don't get me wrong. You know, the kids didn't skip up to me and go, oh my gosh, daddy, we realize that, you know, you're the most greatest thing in the world and everyone and mommy's a monster. No, that's not what's going to happen. But the dynamic between you and the kids changes in a positive way. And it just continues to grow. The more you strengthen that, the more it grows. And the more you do that, the harder it is for your, for a toxic parent to, uh, to weaponize the relationship and basically turn it into a pile of 
crap. So anyways, all right. That was an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, one thing I want to say before, I can't hit the thing to thank the members, but I will say thank you to all the channel members who helped make this happen. If I was in my other thing and I had my little animated overlay, I would be showing you the names right now, which I can't do. So I apologize, but thank you so much for being a channel supporter. And if you want to be a channel supporter, just scroll on down and hit the member thing. The other thing I want to say, kind of interesting. Uh, apparently Spotify decided that I can read ads for them. <laughs> and if you happen to watch the replay on this, uh, or you watch or listen to uh, my podcast on Spotify, which is a lot of, it's basically kind of repurposed content, but you might actually hear a commercial from yours truly pitching Spotify. So that's pretty cool. Uh, kind of neat that that happened. And on that guys, thank you so much. Let me, let me go out by going, thanks so much for hanging out with me and jumping in. We had like 40 some odd people at the height of this, I think, uh, on an unscheduled impromptu stream. Now, unfortunately, Debbie and I have to jump in some cars and move things around and try to figure out how we're going to get her Jeep back because it had to get going in the shop today. But on that, have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you guys on the next one.